Hello, good evening, and welcome to tonight's show. And my name is Ali Dawood. I will be your host for tonight's discussion. This is Majority Caucus live on your multi TV. And tonight, well, uh, there has been a lot of uh, controversy, not really controversy per se, but some misunderstanding regarding the utterances of uh, Pastor Mensah Otabel with uh, his view concerning free education in Ghana. Um, well, if you ask me, I do not see anything wrong with the tape being played, except, of course, uh, perhaps Pastor Mensah Otabel is a bit uncomfortable with the timing of the release of his sermons way back in 2003. But if it is valid in 2003, why would it not be valid now? Uh, would Pastor Mensa Otabel come out and perhaps say he has changed his position on free education? But to answer this question and more, I have been joined in the studio by two powerful guests, uh, Mr. Benjamin Achina Brinchu, uh, member of the NDC uh, government communication team, and then also um, been joined He's also a presidential staffer, by the way, and also been joined by Mr. Samuel George Nerti, uh, another member of the government communication team, to help me do justice uh, to this topic. Towards the end of the program, I would activate the phone line so you can share in your views, and then we could have a very fruitful discussion. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time here. You're welcome. welcome. Um, George, religion and politics, that scares me. Because I know it could serve as a breeding ground for fundamentalism, extremism, you know, you know, the like of Al Qaeda, if you want to say that people trying to use religion and then, you know, in politics to cause mayhem. I do not think that is what we are experiencing in Ghana at the moment. Am I right? Well, Ali, a very good uh, evening to our guests, uh, our listeners, our viewers, and to uh, my co-panelists and yourself. The point must be made here succinctly that. Um, we stand on a threshold in terms of the role of religion in our body politics. I believe as a, a Bible-believing Christian, the Bible is replete with the institution of governance, which invariably is politics. In the Old Testament, God was king of Israel. And when the Israelis or the Israelites decided that they wanted a king, a human king they can see, God gave them their first king, Saul. And subsequently, the, 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 the prophets of God, men of God, were the ones who anointed kings over God's people in Israel. Um, even when you look at Islam and the prophet Muhammad and, and the way the crusades happened, where they, they, they brought the teachings of the prophets to, the, to new lands, and, and you look at the whole northern part of Africa, the Middle East, they spread the message of the holy prophet, and when they did that, they established caliphates to make sure that they could propagate that message. And so religion and politics have been together from time immemorial. Where we stand today, vis-a-vis -vis the Otterbill debacle, as I choose to call it, brings us to that position where we ask ourselves, are we allowing men of God assume a bigger role than they ought to assume as God espoused? Are they moving from being oracles of God which means vessels of God, mouthpieces that God uses to speak to the people, to becoming demigods themselves, where you cannot question them, you cannot, you cannot ask them questions, you cannot, you cannot interpret what they say. Uh, I think it is, it is troubling as a Christian for me to see this develop. You've seen where... Similar things happened 30, 20 years ago within setting circles in Islam, not the whole of Islam, and it led to fundamentalism, where setting clerics became untouchable. Indeed. In becoming untouchable, they had absolute control over the minds of their followers, and they decided to touch the most vulnerable or, 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 or ideologically vague youth group, which is the youth. And today you have, them, you have them being able to tell young men that the right way to go or the teachings of the prophet, peace be unto him, is, is, is for you to engage in suicide bombing. Mm. That clearly cannot be found in the good book, the Quran. At all. There is nothing about suicide bombing in the Quran. At they all. have put their own interpretation on the philosophy of jihad, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be a holy war. Indeed. And, and they wage a callous war on humanity and name it jihad, mm -hmm. which is skewing the words of the good prophet. 
to suit their own parochial interest. Christianity stands on that threshold. Today we have men of God in whose churches, mm. when miracles happen, they do not say praise the Lord. They mention the name of those pastors. Mm. They I bring the names pastors, of the pastors. Yes, those pastors are the ones working the miracles. Now you have a man of God telling us that whatever he says, his thoughts, his words nice. are his property. Bonafide property. I thought the word spoken on the pulpit of God, mm -hmm. on the altar of God as a Christian, are supposed to be known as the word of God. That is why before a pastor comes to preach, mm -hmm. they ask the church, shall we welcome the man of God who is mm -hmm. coming to give to us the word of God? Indeed, uh, that's an interesting perspective. But I'll come back to you for whether or not the NDC is against Christianity, a position that I think is already known to Ghanaians. Uh, Benji, as Pastor Mensah Otabel writes to claim ownership to his words, as uh, George indicated, uh, I mean, this, this, I have heard from certain causes that this a commercial property because he preaches to Ghanaians, and sometimes it's for sale. Okay, Ali, just permit me to also lay a little claim to religion. Of course. <laughs> uh, as I sit here, I sit here as uh, the son of a pastor. I was brought up in a mission house, and my parents are currently uh, uh, pastors of the Church of Pentecost in, in the Shaman district. I fellowship with the Church of Pentecost uh, New Achimata Worship Center. Okay. Uh, I brought this thing up to indicate that I deeply respect uh, the Christian faith, and not just the Christian faith. In a democracy like ours, we've all been through our constitutional arrangement, been made to even respect all religions that we do not necessarily share. And to that extent, Ghana as a country do not have any religious uh, issues or in terms of inter-religion inter, inter, inter fights and other things. Mm -hmm. And that has largely also spared our country to development because elsewhere that has actually made development uh, retrogress. So that's a very happy development for us. Uh, I participate in this discussion reluctantly also because religion seems to have some emotive aspects to it. Many people who are in religion do not necessarily look at the issues involved. They don't look at the logic or the <coughs> merit of the situations on board. They look at the extent to which their faith drives them. It's like football. Yeah. Sometimes it's even like politics. So when you veer into the issue, especially when the subject is about somebody who has largely established himself into the minds and hearts of many people, then it becomes as if you are pitching yourself against a force. Mm -hmm. That is not what we seek to do this evening. As a political party where I come from, the NDC in 1992, through the arrangement of the Constitution, made it possible that all people in this country can practice their faith and in peace. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, NDC as a political party has always tended to give leadership of this country that upholds the higher standards of religion, be it within the Muslim faith or other religions. So we were so much comfortable that our last president, Professor Mills, actually became the single most highest endorsement for the religious faith, even to the point of mockery. So people should not in any way doubt our commitment. If we are here this evening, it is simply to bring our opinion on a national issue which many other people are contributing to. Uh -huh. Directly to your question, okay. is Mensa Utabel right? It is not a question of whether Mensa Utabel is right or not. Mensa Utabel says that he has been libeled, he has been defamed, mm -hmm. he has been wrongly accused or placed in a position that had made people violate his integrity. So, to that extent, when he sought to organize a public forum or a public platform to discuss or put those issues into perspective, we hope that he will actually set the record straight. You understand? That is, that is it. Unfortunately, when Mensa Ota, of course, before I even get there, the main issues here was that he said his voice, his voice, uh -huh. have been manipulated. It has been distorted. It has, been, it has been concocted. It has been pieced together. In fact, he said it has been spliced. Yeah, spliced. You know? So, so, so we were hoping that the platform that he had was going to actually lay those issues to bear and set the record straight. 
Unfortunately, there were specific questions that came up during the press conference. Reverend Utabel, which of your messages have been pieced together, have been doctored, have been spliced? His answer, I don't want to go into it. That's the first one he made. But that's not fair. Well, you, the listeners will make the judgment, but okay. that is what he said. So, where in lies the accusation that people have doctored your tape, so you are going to clarify the, your position? So, where, where, where have your boys been doctored? I don't want to go into it. That's the first point. The other point that he also made so clear is that the sermon that is being played on air were preached several years back. So they asked him, Reverend Otabel, when was this sermon recorded? Again, that one, I don't want to go into it. That was the response he gave? Yes. He doesn't want to go into it. Oh. So he didn't tell the many sermons. First, uh, James Afedo of the, uh, of the, of the, of the Express, of the, of the Daily Express, asked him to give the titles of the various, so that people could search for it. Okay. He didn't give it. And they wanted to know the time. So that they can actually put it where he says several years, he didn't give the time. Then he did something which I thought was most shocking. Mm. Somebody who has been accused allegedly wrongly, and he wanted to clear his name, rather took the opportunity to equally accuse other people. Yeah, I, I want you to deal with the accusation and the counter accusation. But before you continue, uh, let me take a quick break. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Thank you and welcome back to Majority Caucus live on your multi TV. If you just join us, this is Majority Caucus and tonight's discussion as religion and politics fallout from uh, Pastor Mensa Otabel's uh, press conference and matters arising. With me in the studio is Benjamin Achina Brain, two uh, presidential staffer and a member of the government communication team. Also join in as Mr. Jam, uh, Samuel George Nighty, member of government communication team. So, uh, Benji, quickly on, on your yeah, point. So, like mm -hmm. I was saying, uh, whilst he was lamenting the fact that people have wrongly accused him, he did the most unexpected. He went ahead to also accuse uh, the corporate NDC mm -hmm. and the, the president directly. You know, and I thought that was most unfair because the platform was to settle the fact that it is not good to wrongly accuse people. Then you use the same platform. And you see, if accusing Mahama and the NDC members and their surrogate, as he put it, were something that was based in fact, mm -hmm. that wouldn't have been the problem. He did not provide any evidence beyond the accusation. That was deeply troubling. Mm. The other point I also want to make is this. The two tapes that have come up is Mensah Otabel's position on all die be die and also on education. Yes. These are my simple questions, mm -hmm. just quickly. Did he say all die be die is not a good thing? Did he say that? Did he also say that education can never be free? You understand? Assuming he didn't say those things, to set the record straight, what is pastor's position on all die be die? What is pastor's position as an entrepreneur in education and a stakeholder as that? Thank what you. is his position on whether education should be cost sharing, full cost recovery, or free? And then, those were the quite you know, answers um, I wanted. It is an interesting question you've asked because really what would have been the difficulty would be that perhaps you, you cannot force him to comment. Exactly. But once he has commented, we need to know if he still stands by no, that. No, Ali, you, you, it you is it. not a luxury for him to whether he will comment mm -hmm. or not. Because in fact, the comment has already been made there is an by him. No, there is okay. an accusation okay. you know, that these are his comments. Okay. So... It is for him to put what his position on, the, on those things actually are so that it can contradict or prove 
those the existing claims the existing claims indeed that is that is foolproof then we can say oh these guys are liars mm -hmm. these guys are not but what is also turning out is that the guys who are accusing the guys who are playing the tapes the education watch, watch. Mm -hmm. seems to have gathered some boldness indeed mm -hmm. they have self public notice that they did not splice his sermons and that they are going ahead to play the entire sermon this morning, from which they catch yeah, the extracts. The whole, yeah. And they've gone ahead to also actually back their claims with action. Yeah. So it's becoming a, an issue I'll, of I'll credibility. I'll come back to you. We do with the bodies behind <laughs> this advertisement <laughs> and the release it's, of the it's, it's, but, but George, uh, quickly, uh, the NDC, uh, are you against uh, religion, Christianity? To be precise. You know, anybody who says that the NDC is against Christianity or religion in general clearly has his history lessons deficient. Yeah. In this country, pick any of the major churches in this country and I'll tell you that they are highly indebted to the NDC. Action Chapel, you know where they are today. Mm -hmm. That land was rezoned and given to them by Honorable E.T. Mensah, then as mayor of Accra, okay. under the PNDC administration. To build a church. To build a church. A church was not to be there in the original plan. But because we understood that the people of that catchment area needed a place of worship, and at that time, then Bishop Duncan Williams, now Archbishop Duncan Williams, okay. requested for that place. The PNDC, NDC at that point in time, gave in to that demand. It is also instructive to note that whilst ICGC was a bidding power hall, and what I'm going to say here, I hope would not be misinterpreted, and I think with the passage of time, mm -hmm. its effect should have been left. Where ICGC stands today should have been the site for the National Mosque. Mm. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. Again, it was rezoned, and that is why you see the proximity between the National Mosque Mm -hmm. At Abusi mm -hmm. it is just that huge canal okay. that separates Abusi Okai and ICGC. Uh, the, the mosque, at, uh, the national mosque where the mm -hmm. national imam prays, yes. and, and ICGC. Mm -hmm. Once again, the NDC had to bend way over back, meet the then chief imam, mm -hmm. and reach an, an understanding okay. with him that we should create space for Mensa and Otterbill to have that land to build his church. Huh. Where Miracle Church International? Where you have the Perez Dome, Jolly Junction. Yes, I know that, that place used to be produced by a uh, 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 meat production company yeah. behind produced by a PBC. Yeah. Once again, when it was being divested, we said a church should have it. When corporate Ghana wanted that space, we said no. Our friends are the bishops and archbishops and pastors and doctors, and we'll give it to them. And so, if anybody says that the NDC is opposed to Christianity, we have done the most to entrench Christianity in this country. What is a church without its buildings? What is a church without a place of worship? It is the same NDC that did its best to ensure that in passing the laws that govern taxation, mm -hmm. we exempted tithes and offertories. Mm. And by a very That's large free. extension, many of the pastors have abused that law. Okay. When they, when they sell their CDs, their messages, mm -hmm. how many of them pay revenue tax to the country? Not that I can think of. Yeah. Your tithe, your offering, is non-taxable. But when you sell tapes, it is a commercial activity. I heard Nana Santi Bediotu say that Mensa Hunterbill had economic and, and moral rights in terms of copyright law over his, his, his material because it is his preaching. Oh, you're a law student. I'm As a law student, it's very interesting <laughs> because if he wants to claim economic right, mm -hmm. he who seeks equity must come with clean hands. Clean hands, indeed. He should show us his tax invoices. Equity is equality. Exactly. <laughs> there must be, he, he must, to have earned economic rights, mm -hmm. he must have assumed economic liability in terms of taxes for the tapes that are being sold. But I stand to be corrected. If you go to the Central University's campus today at Mutu, they have what they call an ideology center that is named after one of the stalwarts of the NPP tradition. 
You go there and find the church arts. premises. And, no, the school, the, the, school. the Central okay. University College. Okay. This is to give you a background of where this is coming from. Uh -huh. I will not take Pastor Otter Bill on because I think it is insignificant for the NDC's forward march to victory in 2012. Uh -huh. Some other time, that would be a debate for some other time. Okay. But for me, I will take on the issues he has raised uh -huh. and the issues both on the tape and at the press conference. The issues on the tape he spoke about, those who say all die be die are bad company. I and the that. stress is on the bad, bad company. Bad company. Did Mensah Otterbill say that? Or was it doctored and spliced? No. He said so. Did Mensah Otterbill say in his tape of 10 years ago mm -hmm. that anything free, you can't question the quality? The quality. And so you must pay so that you would have the dignity of a father? He, he stressed on the pay. If you want quality, exactly. education, you must, you must pay. pay. Yeah. He has a, a nice way of stressing on certain yeah. words. Did he say that? Was that spliced? Once again, thanks to Education Watch and the tapes you're listening to today on Radio Gold and Moon TFM, they, those tapes exist. Once again, the tape of 23rd October 2012. Very recent. Recently, where he says that, and in that message, he was, he was actually not even talking about education. Mm -hmm. He was admonishing his, his congregants to learn to work hard and okay. earn money. And told them to build a better life for themselves or for their children than themselves. So that if you had, a, and then that's where he got into education. Because he started first from saying, if, if, if your father had three wives, you should have one wife. If your father drank, you shouldn't drink. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up in saying, if you had a primary education, make sure your child has a better education. Instead of, right now, they say to be free. And he mm -hmm. laughs. You could see the mockery in his laughter when Indeed. he was talking about the free SHS. And he goes on to say that if you go for the free thing, the knowledge they will bring to you, and he left it hanging. So really, um, that begs the question, where is the NDC's crime in all this? I, I, I don't see it. Ali, yeah. the NDC and MPP have traded verbal blows in this country, okay. not just this election campaign, since 1992. Mm -hmm. We're being at each other's necks with verbal innuendos. Never in one statement has the NDC or the NPP used the kind of words that were used by a man of God uh. on each other. We haven't even descended that low into the gutters. Yet a man of God went there yesterday. Uh. He called us evil. He called us a, 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 a marauding force. No, a marauding and a bullying oh, you have the force. My a marauding and bullying force. He called us unethical. He called us criminal. Machiavellian. And he went ahead and called us Machiavellian. That is serious. Machiavelli, Machiavellian Niccolo Machiavelli, Machiavelli represents the depths, the lowest of the lowest of evil. All of because, human capacity for all evil. Because, uh, uh, because an I education play watch uh, played his voice. His own sermons. No, no he also called you schizophrenic. He called us schizophrenic. Even more than Yes. Now, the point I must make, Ali, is this. Mm -hmm. This is a man who in 2008. The NPP used to great political capital when they said that if you voted for the NDC, Mensah Waterbill, along with about 29 others on a 30 man hit list, would okay. be assassinated in this country. I, 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 he mentioned that in his statement. And he said that for that, mm -hmm. when he was allegedly put on a hit list, it did not even warrant him to speak. Yet when you play back the words mm -hmm. which God spoke through him, I am not afraid he is afraid of those words. Those words are not men's words. Mm. Those words are the words of the creator of heaven and earth. And mm. when God speaks, the Bible tells us that his word will not return void unto him until they accomplish the reason for which they went out. God spoke through Otterbill 10 years ago that in this country, quality education would, 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 would be victorious mm -hmm. over free education, education. and Indeed. and today mm -hmm. Otterbill is afraid of the word of god and uh, well, but it is the living word uh, yes on that note i'll take my uh, uh second break uh, <laughs> forgive me Lewis. and uh, when we come back benji will tell us uh indeed whether the position of the ndc is justified uh stay with me don't go anywhere i'll be right Welcome back to the show. This is Majority Cockles. If you're just joining us, we've been discussing uh, 
the matters arising from Pastor Mensa Otabel's tape uh, with regards to uh, you know some issues that he seems to be very uncomfortable with being uh, played by the Education Watch Committee. Um, Benji, really, yeah. my difficulty is that a pastor has preached sermons. NDC, or no, not even the NDC, a committee, an independent organization, uh, saw it fit uh, to make use of it. Obviously, the words of the pastor are not perishable. I can say that. Uh, it goes to benefit the NDC, to be sincere. Uh, Ali, Ali, mm -hmm. Ali. Uh, I like us to put the issues into perspective. Of course. Uh, if the pastor feels that he has been libeled, he has been defamed. The group that is behind this thing, the founder is a senior lecturer, I'm told, on the University of Ghana campus. Okay. They exist. You should take them on in court. We can settle this issue once okay. and for all. It's very important. It is not enough for you to also go out and libel people. For a man of his character, stature, it is way below him. And I don't say it out of disrespect. I will be happy if he sues them so that we get a legal precedent on these issues. The other thing also about his voice is being used, he doesn't like that. As I sit on your studio, or on your platform here, I don't have the choice, get it? I don't have the luxury to tell multi TV not to use the sound bites I'm currently producing. It is not for me to say that multi TV should use it or not. Since Kwame Nkrumah's time, they've been playing his sound bites. No royalty goes to his family. Mm -hmm. They keep playing it. There have been very horrible things politicians have said in this country. Sometimes we have to go and beg journalists that, as for this one, we beg, mm. hide it. But they don't hide it. Look. When Anna Akufuadu made his point about Ekwetiyambo Yechiro Mubibimpo. You mean Etiwa? Etiwa Yechiro Mubibimpo. When there were comments by, like, militants on our side will rise up. When Anna Akumia used his infamous stupid fool. Masa, if you are in Anna Akumia, or you are in Anna and you are sitting in your house, and you hear these things being played on air, you are not happy. At all. Because it doesn't represent you in a manner that you really feel you should be represented. I mean, you said those things anyway, but you don't want people to know that this is what the, the image the public should have over you. Because it's but it's does Nana do have the choice to tell any media house in Ghana here that don't play those sound bites? Never. When Professor Mills made the co made a slip of a comedy. Mm -hmm. They use it as jingles. And it became a ringtone. Ring yeah, ringtone, yeah. You see, I don't know why we want to stretch. I know of a radio station, Kum TV station, that use it as jingle. Well, no, let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's quickly. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. That's why when I started, I went into the issues. He has been defamed. That's not good. So he should tell us how he has been defamed. He didn't say it. You understand? Then he went ahead to make his own allegations which he didn't provide the proof. Then the group that is libeling him comes out to say that, okay, fine. Our credibility is at stake here. So they go ahead and send the full sermon to all the media houses. Now, any media house that doesn't play it has just decided not to play it. But it is not a question of they having it or not. And this is where I move to the media. Uh -huh. There seem to be a certain tendency. People can say all oh, manner of words to Nanado. People can say all manner of words to uh, 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 Mahama. People can say all manner of words to Achina. Maybe because we are politicians. People say things to politicians, and journalists will grill you as if you are not a human being. Mm. But why are the journalists in this instance not asking the questions they should ask Reverend Otabel? You mean the right question? Yes, that will settle it. It looks as if they are above the questioning tag. Look. I'll just, I'll just tell you something, and uh, maybe I'll just end with it. In 2008, he himself alluded to it, that there was a certain hit list which he was drawn in. He was not drawn in. 
the MPP as a political party, in their quest to gain political advantage and paint the NDC as anti democrats, NDC as, 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 as a violent party, decided to appeal to the middle class by manufacturing a list of respectable people in the country and claiming that those people are going to be killed. Unfortunately, the behavior of those respectable people mm -hmm. at the time is not in anywhere near how Mensa Otabel is responding to this particular one. And I'll just read how the statesman reported it mm -hmm. at the time. A former general overseer, and this is 2008, a former general overseer of the Methodist Church of Ghana, mm -hmm. Most Reverend Dr. Samuel Asantienfi, has challenged security agencies to act expeditiously to confirm the veracity or otherwise of an alleged hit list compiled by former President Rawlings if the NDC win the elections. Uh -huh. This is how the Reverend put it. He goes on. The list, made up of prominent men and women in all sectors of the economy, was sent by an email. Other death threats have been sent via text. Reverend Asantienfi's name is also on the list. Reverend Asantienfi, who is also a member of the Council of the State, told the statement in an interview that he has been receiving death threats, giving mm -hmm. credence to the, to the, to the allegation. Mm -hmm. He has been receiving death threat messages through emails containing names of prominent people like ministers of God, ministers of state, politicians, businessmen, journalists, and other society, mm -hmm. other people in the society, by the former president. They've shortlisted these names to deal with them. I am, not being, I am not being personal to any political party, the Reverend Minister himself says it, because it seems Rollins himself has certain pertinent problems with some members of the NDC, and that is why the hot list even has some big members of the NDC in it. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on and on to provide names of Otabel, and many other big people in the society. This is how the clergy treated it. Fast track to 2012. You say that there's, you have also been drafted into it. Let's say that this is this, this drafting you are talking about. Why is it that when the MPP drafted you in 2008, you didn't describe them as evil, mm -hmm. mischief makers, schizophrenics, mm -hmm. Criminals and you, 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 and there's a daily graphic report which we'll be producing, okay. which actually also authenticates also that. Also, must be stated on record, uh, and that allegation was even more dangerous than. This is about murder. Uh, yeah. This is about murder. So one would expect that the, the response. I'm would be putting it here, the Reverend Otabel, from our sources in daily graphic, daily graphic reports, and I have heard it from Mr. Timothy Goba, mm -hmm. that they have report of Mr. Otabel who confirmed to the graphic that actually he fears for his life. Mm. So he confirmed it. However, in 2012, you go ahead and insult members of the party and bring the president into the fray. Why will you treat the why will you treat these scenarios in a different in a different manner? Especially when the group which is doing this have owned up that we are the people uh, doing it. And, and 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 one last thing I just would like to also talk okay. about. He says that he is angry because these issues have exposed him to public ridicule really? and scorn. Yeah. You know, when the issues came up, it was the MPP that came on the full attack. To insult yeah, him. Come into the position so the his fear, mm -hmm. what he's trying to avoid is attack and insults on the MPP. Mm -hmm. Even if what he said is true. Do you know what Stephen went through for the sake of the Bible? Stephen was fried in oil. Mm. Peter was crucified upside, upside down. down. Mm. Others were stoned to death. Jesus himself was crucified. John the Baptist's head was cut. And if in our days, just playing the tape amounts to I'm saying that if in our days, mm -hmm. our pastors will go to length to make sure that they are not identified with issues which are hot, so that they don't incur the wrath of certain sections of our society, it tells us a lot. And I'm thinking that you smell some. Uh, I am thinking, and the other, the, and what is even strange is that mm -hmm. you had Reverend Fred Digby. You know, sitting by him, 
And uh, my fear is that... But, but I have heard some rumor. I do not no, know. I don't want to go into no, no, the rumors. That, uh, some of them were not privy to the full content of the I don't want to go the into the rumors. But what I'm saying is that... What surprise. I'm saying is that... Mm -hmm. Our pastors have advised us that any time members of political parties misbehave, we should give them up. We shouldn't rally behind them. Okay. We shouldn't do that kind of NDC, MPP thing. People should answer for their issues. When there's an issue such as this, which involves one member of mm -hmm. the Christian community, and you have the leadership of the, of the Christian council flanking him in a press conference, which he insults, use words which are unprintable, to denigrate, even to by, 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 by association, the president. And we, are we tempted to believe that you are shielding your own you identify with the words he's using? Yeah, I, 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 what are their positions on good. these things? I, I, will, I will come back to the position of the Christian on Council on this one. But before we do that, uh, George, um, what has been the position of the MPP on this matter? Like I said, I've also heard some rumors again that perhaps Pastor Mansour Tebo has uh, come under intense pressure some, from some unforeseen hands. Uh, you, see, you, know. you see, Ali, it is interesting that today the NDC is being called evil and, and all of that. When the first tape came out, you should have heard the words people like Gabriel Tridaco okay. used on to describe Reverend. Could refresh our memory, Pastor Pastor Mensah mm -hmm. He said he was out of touch with reality. Huh. Okay, they mm -hmm. condemned him. Somebody like uh, what was his name? Uh, Obami. Obami. Alfred Obami, Obami. Mm -hmm. went viral on him, and Alfred Obami is a member of ICGC. Okay. If Mensah Otterbill has anything to fear, it is the morading and bullying force of the NPP okay. and his machinery. Because we have stood by him in all times. In, in his most trying period, we stood by him. And you see, Ali, I want to use this platform to reach out to one who will refer to or regard as a spiritual father, uh -huh. Pastor Mensah Otterbill, that as a man of God, you should apologize to the, to the president, not to the NDC, to the president. You do not insult the NDC of which the president is the leader. Mm -hmm. Call them all the names. When you do that, automatically you are calling the president all of those things. You finish calling the president evil, calling the president Machiavellian, calling the president schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. And then you ask the president... To call his party to order. But he left it to God. Then after doing all of mm -hmm. that, you now say you are leaving it to God. And the president who is That's a Christian. A curse, you see, mm -hmm. Ali, Pastor Mensa Otterbill must lead by example. Okay. He must come out and apologize to His Excellency the President. Okay. And state what his position is. Mm -hmm. You see, I heard Reverend Autry say that, uh, you know, he was, he was asked clearly, what is... Pastor Mensah Otterbill's position on free education. And he said that this, the church had issued a statement earlier, mm -hmm. about two weeks ago. Now, Ali, if you take that statement and you look at paragraph three, the church says that Pastor Mensah Otterbill's views on free education are as espoused in the Constitution and that it covers from basic education to senior high school. Now, reading Article 25 of the 1992 Constitution, mm -hmm. which spells out Article 25.1b. Allow me to do this. When we come back, um, you are going to go through that quickly. And then we'll look at the press statement issued by the NDC Director of Communication uh, for Campaign John Mahama 2012. Uh, stay with me. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Um, welcome back to the show. This is Majority Caucus Live on your multi TV, and I will activate the phone line shortly so you could uh, join in the discussion. Uh, but before that, uh, George, uh, if you could. Uh, yes, the point I was making was in paragraph three of the statement signed by Reverend Autry on behalf on behalf of the ICGC Church. What was stated there was that Reverend Autobill agrees with the constitutional provisions. Okay. The constitutional provisions as espoused in the 1992 Constitution for free education. Now, that constitution in Article 25, 1B, 
one A, sorry, one A defines basic education to mean from basic school to junior high school. Nanado Danko Akufuado and the NPT define their basic education to extend to the senior high school. Pastor Otterbill's statement tells us that. Uh, let, let me do this quick exercise. I'll, I'll come back to you. Uh, the phone line to reach uh, in the studio is uh, 0302 0302-211-7024. Yeah, George. Pastor Mensah Otterbill's statement tells us mm -hmm. that he believes that free education as espoused in the Constitution, mm -hmm. is from basic school to senior high school, which clearly yeah. means that they are not referring to the 1992 mm -hmm. Constitution. Yeah. They are rather referring to the manifesto of the NPP. Indeed. As the, mani as the Constitution of this Republic. And that betrays the position Pastor Mensah Otterbill espoused yesterday in his press statement, mm -hmm. where he says that his position differs okay. from the NDC and the NPP's position. Good the man position has already told that. us that his position is constitutional. Mm -hmm. And he misquotes the constitution to suit a political because party's if it is agenda. The, if it is constitutional, that would be it the position of the NDC. Exactly, <laughs> you get it. And so you see, you see, the, the, the uh, hypocrisy is is is, is yeah, palpable. Let me pick this phone call and then I'll get back to you. Um, hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, good evening and welcome to the show. Thank you. Good evening. This is Babs calling from Bolga. Babs, you're on air. Good evening to my gentleman NDC. Yes, tonight we had our share of. Meeting the president, it was marvelous. Indeed. Volga came to a standstill, though it was in the night, but we really enjoyed our share of the campaign trail. He stopped yesterday night. We thank okay. God for the life of our president. If you and could be brief. Of government. And then coming to the Otterbill issue, Quickly. I believe he should have even thank the NDC for making the whole world to know that still there are men of God in this country. What is he run away from? In the days that he was in the Real Italy, that was the time he should have cried. But he kept quiet. Now that he has been shown to the whole world that still men of God will say something 10 years or 6 years ago and it will come to reality. He should have even thanked his stars. But mm. even being someone who will say... Okay, thank you very much, uh, Babs. Unfortunately, I do not have much time. Hello? Hello. Yeah, good evening and welcome to the show. Yeah, good evening. My name is Aqua. Yeah, Aqua, you're on air. I'm speaking from Sunyane. Okay. Yeah. In actual fact, I don't understand what Ottawa has, has, has done. Um, you were asked to, to state your point on what, what has allegedly been said about you. So you are claiming that you have been accused. Now, people are saying um, there, I don't know the name of. The group that came up with Edu Edu Education Watch. Watch. That's the name of the group. Education Watch. Yeah. They are saying that they are the people who brought out the case. They've owned up. Why is he still accusing the NDC and the, uh, the president? Why doesn't he state his point that this is the group? Now, I don't agree with this group. So if they have any backup team, they should bring it. And we all discuss it. So I don't know. I don't know his point. Yeah, okay. Yeah, really made not, no point. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for making your point. Yeah. Yeah. You're rounding up with a, with, a, mm -hmm. with a response from the John Mahama 2012 campaign. I think the point has been made clearly that as far as we are concerned, Pastor Mensah Otterbill seeks to oversimplify the issue. Mm -hmm. You cannot hold Pastor Mensah Otterbill liable for the actions or inactions of any of his pastors, much mm -hmm. less his church members. Mm -hmm. And so, if people who are aligned or sympathetic to the NDC choose to play a tape which is not doctored. If it was doctored, it would be criminal. Yeah. But a tape which is the exact representation of what Pastor Otterbill said, they are not putting a spin on it, like mm -hmm. we saw with the Baba Jamal tape. This is the real thing. Okay. We should Benji. stop playing the victim, and they should own up to And And, and I want to repeat here again. Mm -hmm. He owes His Excellency an apology. An apology. And the Christian unqualified Council, one. an unqualified apology. Mm -hmm. And the Christian Council must do what they ask politicians to do. Mm -hmm. That we should name and shame. They should call Pastor Mensa Otterbill and sanction. Let him. me put that to you. Do you think it's about time people become very bold? Mm. Yeah, yeah, because if you read the statement, name and shame. Just quickly, if you read, they say, "Who are those behind this act? Who are those hiding in the shadows and orchestrating this evil agenda?" Yeah. You understand? So, it is not somebody hiding in their shadows. Okay. They've come out, and I have said that the one, be, the, the, the executive secretary, it's indeed. Natural, right? A senior lecturer. No, this senior man lecturer. has been a Tewu president for over decades, almost two decades. This is not a, a, a straw. 
But you see, we need to move forward. Okay. And in moving forward, this is not about uh, 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 attack on a reverend minister. This is about building a society where we can work with the truth. The same standards our pastors always hold us to. We just feel that... Is NDC the victim finally? Uh, I was saying that the same standards our pastors hold us to. Mm -hmm. This is the, just the same standards we think that we should hold on to. It doesn't matter whether this is a China, a politician, or a pastor. We need to be fair and put some of these religious sentiments aside. NDC doesn't come into this one except for the unproven allegations. Okay. And like my brother said, it is only fair that if you libel somebody and you don't have the facts, and if you insult somebody and the person draw your attention to it, when you are sober, perhaps he was angry or emotional, mm -hmm. the only thing you need to do is to retract so that we can move on. We have no problem against ICGC. Our members are there. NDC have active members of 4 million okay. at every point in time. Mm -hmm. When we uh, talk about floating voters, we need floating voters to add to this 4 million. So we will not for any reason okay. want to pitch against uh, Unfortunately, uh, on, mean, that, on that note, lastly, George, uh, George I, I did the not have, I did not have the point any time. Made, I beg yes, you, quickly, I beg you. quickly, quickly, please. The point just has to be made. Within five in seconds. In all of this, mm -hmm. the one individual mm -hmm. who suffers the most is mm -hmm. His Excellency the President, the President, who has been drawn into all okay, of this. Okay, I'm sure and it will reach the ears of the members of the ICGC. On that note, uh, viewers, we'll end tonight's discussion. I'm sure that it is much more interesting. Uh, than ever before and make a date with me on Thursday when I come your way with another edition of Majority Caucus. Uh, till then, stay blessed and be good. Shalom. Bye -bye.